Lord for being here tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, brother. Certainly a, uh, can you all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, man. Man. Joy, honor, and a privilege to be here. Yeah. Man. Amongst family in more ways than one. Man. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. Yes, that. Yes, Father. for that day that uh, God saved me. Man. That's right. Who yes. was there? Thank you, Lord, for that. Yeah, man, brother. Yes, indeed. No yes, indeed. Trying to break through, trying yes. to get there. Oh, my. God. Come on now. The enemy was right there. Yes, sir. Trying to keep me from getting through. That one I'm trying to do. He did yeah. not give up on trying to keep me in sin all the way up to and including down to the point where I was praying to get saved. That's right. Yeah, I mean, he was all the way there until I told the brother to go and get my mother. Yeah. She was next door cooking. She came up from next door and uh, she said, Samuel, let it go. And then that was apparently what the devil wasn't trying to hear. That's so right. when, he, when he heard that, that was it. That thing right. broke. All right. He had to get it out of there. Yeah. And thank the Lord since that day. Thank you, God has yeah, blessed us, right. God has helped us, thank God has strengthened us, God has encouraged us, God has taken us through all kind of different situations and scenarios. You yes, know, the does. ups and the downs, the ins and the outs. And yes, like Brother Moon said, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. here. Yeah. 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 I'm still here in Bacon or still here in Springfield. That's right, brother. We are. But I'm still here yeah. in the church of God. Yeah. 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 Thank I'm you, brother. Still here in the truth. Still here where he put me. That's right. The right. Bible right. said that he added to the kingdom such as should be saved. That's right. You can't get into his kingdom without God putting you in. That's right. That's right. He's, right. he's the one that put us in here, and I'm thankful. For that. Yeah, know you that. know, if it wasn't for him that put you in there, somebody would have put you out. If God didn't put you in his kingdom, if somebody right. put you in the kingdom, somebody would have put you out. A long time ago. Yeah, yeah. You ain't gonna get around somebody not liking you. Yeah, You're no, not gonna get around somebody right. being jealous. Right. You're not gonna get around somebody being envious. Yeah. They're gonna right. look at you, they're gonna come into the kingdom, and they're gonna put their eye right on you and say, Yeah, I'm gonna get them out of here. All right. I'm gonna get them out of here. The kingdom of heaven to be like corporate America. Right. Oh, yeah, the bill. Well, for me to get that job that I want, I'm going to have to get them out of that position so I can get that job. Right. So right. they all come around talking about how so and so doing. They're doing terrible. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to job you're doing. They're going to lie. Because oh, they have a good job. Mm -hmm. But thank the Lord, God put us in his kingdom. He, he, is. Is. he, is. he, is. he put us in his hand. No oh, man can pluck right. us out. Glory. No man. No man can pluck us out. That's right, right, brother. Praise the living God. Praise the God. Right. 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 Never. It is not incumbent upon whether somebody else does what they're supposed to do, whether somebody else is where they're supposed to be. But dear friend, this is all about us individually. Right, Lord. That's how God Come sees on. it. No matter what came your way, no matter what trial you had to go through, no matter what test, none of that matters. That's the right. question is, did you do all you were supposed to do and did you use all the power and strength that I had available for you to do it? That's, That's right. what it comes down to. Right. So, Thank the Lord, this is my first revival. Amen. We need a whole lot of prayer. A right. whole lot of prayer. So as you listen, pray, listen, pray, listen, pray. Oh yeah, we have to. We have to do that. <laughs> but continue to pray. That's right. As you listen. We want to give you a definition of revival, and we pray that you write this down so that we can use this definition the whole time we're here to help us out. Revival. Restoration to life. Yeah, that's right. Restoration to life or restoration to consciousness or restoration to vigor, which is energy and intensity or restoration to strength, 
etc. So restoration to whatever else that you might need that uh, for whatever reason you may have lost a little bit of. So first for those that don't have life and those that don't know this way, the revival can restore them or bring them to life. Bring them to salvation. Which is what we're always praying for. That's 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 our prayer for any other prayer. That is our prayer. Lord save these souls that don't know you. Restoration to consciousness. Sometimes you can be almost unconscious in salvation. I mean things come your way and come in such a way that uh, I mean you can nearly be not unconscious. And unconscious okay. is not death. Uh -huh. But it's a state where you don't know what's going on around you. You don't know. Right. Come on. They have to maybe sprinkle uh, pepper in your nose, <laughs> give you a little smelly right. salt, right. douse you with some raw water. But they got to revive you some kind of way. And uh, once they revive you, then you come back to life. Vigor. Sometimes the energy just wants to, the enemy just wants to innervate us. That's a pretty big word. I learned that word one day and I stuck with that word. Innervate. E N E R V A T E. Yes, sir. And that means to take your energy away. He wants to innervate us. Let me just sap some of their energy. Let me just sap some of their strength away. So when you feel like I, I, I can't do this. I just can't do it. And if you get into that mindset or you give yourself those feelings, dear friend, half the battle is deciding that I can do it. The other half is allowing Christ to help you go through and do it. But if you tell yourself you can't do it, you're not going to try to do it because you already tell yourself I can't do it. So the devil can innervate you, sap the energy, sap your, your strength and your, and your mentality, bring it down a little bit, then you'll feel like this is too much. You can't do it. So we want to have a revival to give you your energy, to give you your intensity back. If that's dropped a little bit, we don't want that to go down on E and then go into the reserve tank. We want to keep that on full. Don't worry about the price of the gasoline because Christ is paying. So Amen. you gotta worry about it. You gotta pass up this station to get God. Up to the one that's four cents cheaper. Right. You must try to run all out of your energy in your business. So just get at this station right here, no matter what it costs, and let God pay for it. Amen. So you can keep that vigor and the intensity. And then the last one, strength. We don't want to lose our strength ever. We want to stay strong. And the Bible says in Philippians four and thirteen. I can do all things Amen. through Christ who strengthens me. Thank God. Our strength is in Christ. So this revival, we want to be restored to our strength in Christ. Mark the fourth chapter. For a few minutes, we're going to talk with you tonight. We're going to pose a challenging question. Ask the Lord to help us. Expound on this as He showed it to us. Mark chapter four. We'll start reading at verse number one. Mark 4, verse number one. And he began to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered to him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had no, not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Yeah. And some fell among thorns, and the yeah. thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up. And increased and brought forth some thirty and some sixty and some a hundredfold. Verse number eight it says, and other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. Tonight we want to talk to you on the thought, where is your increase? Dear friend, going down through this parable here, when Jesus spoke to these individuals in the multitude, 
He spoke to them in parables so that they could understand the spiritual things that he was trying to get them to understand. But because they weren't spiritually sound, he couldn't talk to them as in spiritual, so he gave them parables to give them understanding. So when he was going down through here, and we'll read where he explains what he's talking about, but as he began to talk to them and teach them, he was talking to them about something that they were very familiar with, and that's being farmers, <coughs> planting crop and growing crop and reaping crop. They knew about that. They were farmers. So he talked to them about something that was very familiar with them to get them to understand something that was spiritual that was a whole lot more important than this natural. That right. So when you go over to verse number 13, we'll read down through there and then we'll talk about this a little bit. Verse 13 said, And he said unto them, his disciples, Know ye not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown, sown on stony ground. But when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this life, this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Verse 20, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Dear friend, first of all, we look at verse number three. It says, Behold, there went out a sower to sow. This evening, Lord is helping us to be that sower. And this word of God, dear friend, we're sowing to all that is in the audience tonight. Amen. So we know that this parable was not just him speaking back then, but this parable is for all time's sake. Yeah. Jesus was the sower and Jesus preached the word of God back then. Right. And he taught his disciples to do the same. And down through the many years of time, up into and including the present day, dear friend, as sowers, we're still going out into this world. That's right. And speaking to the multitudes mm -hmm. and sowing the word of God. That's right. And just as we're still going out into the multitude and sowing the seed of the word of God to the multitude, Dear friend, in that multitude, within that multitude, is still this category of people. Amen. As we read through here, we realize that there's four categories of people that Jesus is talking about. And of these four categories of people that he's talking about, dear friend, he's talking about four separate heart conditions. God bless. First of all, he said that the seed fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Yeah. Some people hear the word of God and just as soon as they hear it, I don't believe that. Oh, I don't believe that. Oh, and just, there's nothing else you can say to them. There's nothing else they talk to them about. They're done with you. Just that fast. Sometimes you go out and you're witnessing, you're passing out tracks and you pass out. I don't want that. Yeah, they don't want it. Their heart is so hard and their heart is so stoned against the things of God. I mean, you can't even put a trap in their hand. Don't want it. And then the next category says that some fell among, um, I'm sorry, some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. So that some people hear the word of God and then they actually like what they hear and they come down. And they get saved. Come on. Right, right. And then after they get saved, they start on their way of this holy highway. And they're coming to service. And they're listening to the messages and singing the songs. And then perhaps one of those messages that comes across the pulpit hits them right where it matters the most. <laughs> And they figure in their mind while you're preaching or while you're maybe giving a testimony or what have you, uh, 
I'm doing exactly what they're up there saying or what they're talking about. Now you mean to tell me I can't do this no more? God bless. And dear friend, as the sun comes up, Man. they say, that seed was scorched. Mm. We're brother so-and-so. He was here two weeks ago, and that's the last time we've seen him, too. Mm. Two right. weeks ago. Right. right. He couldn't take that heat. That sun came up and that scorched that little bit of, of seed that fell in his heart. <coughs> We haven't seen him since. And then some fell among thorns. Get right. Come on. And dear friend, we know that a rose, when it grows, it grows with thorns actually on it. That's right. Yeah. So you get a pretty flower. You get a beautiful smelling flower. But dear friend, if you don't handle that flower right, you mess around and tear your hand up with all them thorns. And dear friend, when the word of God is sown, is sown among thorns, but the idea is that you will let the word of God raise you up like a flower and not let the thorns raise up and destroy your flower. But it said in this last category that some fell among thorns and the thorns grew. Yes. It didn't say the word of God grew. No, it didn't say the, the uh, individual who actually received the word grew. It said the thorns grew. God bless. And so, dear friend, if thorns grow before the crop grows, uh, it's not going to be much longer before the crop's not there. That's right. The thorns is there. The thorns have actually grown up and taken over. And then we go to the last category where it says, and other fell on good ground and did yield fruit mm -hmm. that sprang up and increased. That's right. Dear friend, that should be everybody in here heart desire. Yeah. To have a heart that is so tender. Yes, Lord. To have a heart that is so welcoming and so warming to the word of God that when that seed is sown, that the only thing you'll do is bring forth fruit. That's right. That's it. Yeah. Unfortunately, if we look at these four categories and we take 100% uh, of the people that was there, Dear friend, 75% of them was cast away. That's right. The first 25% right away, they didn't want it. The second 25%, they tried for a brief moment and then they gave it up. The next 25%, it fell amongst the thorns and they got caught up in the cares of this world and going about doing and doing and doing and put the word of God to a side and they didn't pray and read and fast as they ought and they didn't bring forth any fruit. Oh no. So out of a hundred percent of the people that was there, seventy-five percent of them didn't bring forth fruit. Mm -hmm. And dear friend, if you look around the church world today, these numbers are no different. The oh, Bible no. says, few there be that enter in. Yes. A few. Right. If we look about who made it on the ark, dear friend, he built the ark big enough to put everybody that he was preaching to yeah. on the ark. Right. But only eight yeah. souls made it on there. When he went to Sodom and Gomorrah before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham asked him, he said, Lord, what about 50 souls? Uh huh. If we, if we can find 50 righteous, will you spare the Sodom and Gomorrah? Uh -huh. And God said, you find 50, I'll spare it. Uh huh. Yeah. But dear friend, before Abraham got through talking with the angels, he was all the way down to 10. If you find 10, he said, if you can find 10 righteous people in Sodom, I'll spare the city. God bless. Needless to say, dear friend, Lot and his two daughters were the only ones who really made it out. His wife made it out, but she turned around and looked back. Man. So she may yeah. as well stay in the city. Man. So dear friend, these numbers that we're working with and that we're dealing with tonight, they're not uncommon. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's not going to be too many people who bring forth fruit. They're not. They're and right. according to the numbers here, only 25% is going to bring forth fruit. Uh huh. The other 75% some kind of how they're not going to make it. They're not. And dear friend, if you're going to be a part of this 25% that brings forth fruit, you cannot just allow your heart to be softened when you first hear the word of God. 
but dear friend, you have to have a soft heart even after you've been saved for 40, 50, 60 plus years. Yes, you do. That heart still yes. has to be fertile ground. Oh, yes. Dear friend, the sower comes to sow the word. He's sowing the word constantly and continuously on your heart. Man, right. If at any time you begin to stop taking the water and your heart begins to get like hard ground, dear friend, if you don't water ground, you can't plant seeds That's in right. hard yeah. dirt. That's right. That's right. It don't work. They yeah. tell you to break the ground up, put a little water on there, then dig down there, then plant the seed. And after you plant the seed, water it. That's what you have Give to it do. a little bit of light. Man. Dear friend, the reason why you're watering and giving it light is because you're trying to get that plant to grow. Man. Man. But dear friend, if you think that because that you heard the word and because you started on your way, if you don't have to do anything else after that, and you're going to still grow, sadly yeah. mistaken. Right. Dear yeah. friend, your heart has to stay tender. Yeah. It has to stay tender. Yeah. Yeah. You have to yeah. continuously yeah. water your heart. That's How right. do you water your heart? With the word of God. The word of God will water your heart. Jesus said that when he was talking to the woman at the well, he said, I will give you living water. Well of living water down inside that spring is up. Therefore, we got to have that well of living water. Yes. If you don't have this word, if you don't study the word, if you don't read the word of God, if you don't stay on your knees, dear friend, it's just a matter of time before the thorns are going to come up That's right. and choke the word out. And you're not going to be fruitful. And some people, they feel like as long as I'm around the church, I'll be okay. As long as I'm still here, I'm alright. But dear friend, the Bible teaches us and the Bible tells us that if you don't bring forth fruit, he's going to take the branch out of the vine and cast it away. Yes. Over in John, the 12th chapter. John. I'm sorry, let's go to John the 15th chapter. That's right. John 15, we'll start reading at verse number one. Okay. He said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Yeah, right. Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he taketh away. Dear friend, this is cut and dry. Come on. This is in red letters. This is Jesus actually speaking to his people. He said, every branch that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Oh, Lord. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth or cleanseth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Yeah, that's right. Abiding in Christ is reading and praying and being diligent in your life yeah. as a Christian. Yeah. You can't put the Bible to the side and put your prayer life on hold and expect still to abide in the vine. True. It's not going to work like that. True. He said, I am the vine, ye that's are the right. branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Yes. And most times when the thorns grow up and it chokes the word out, is because people have taken upon their own selves to try to do things for themselves, by themselves. That's right. That's what they do. You're trying to find out what job that you should work at. So you're looking and see who pays X amount of money so you can get the highest paying job. But God is telling you you need to work over here because this will keep you closer to your church and this will also help you to get into service more and the prayer meetings and yes. help your prayer and your fast life but no, you want this job over here yeah, that's going to pay you more and it's going to also cause you to work a whole lot of overtime Amen. and the right. cares of this world Amen. the deceitfulness of riches Amen. is going to choke you through. Amen. Dear friend, that's the reason why we have to have God leading and guiding and directing us. Yes, because right. he knows what type of plant you are. Amen. And he knows what type of water and what type of light you need in order for you to grow. True. Right. We yeah. don't know. Come on. So when we go about trying to do things on our own, we don't understand, we don't realize that what we're doing is causing thorns to grow yeah, instead right. of causing our fruit. Yeah, yeah, to actually grow. Come on, brother. Pray, yeah. He said, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall add what ye will, yes. and it shall be done unto you. Dear friend, this is 
a true life of a Christian. Never. Abiding in the vine. Never. If you abide in the vine, dear friend, you will bring forth fruit. Never. Over in Psalms, the first chapter, in verse number three, it said, and he shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. But dear friend, he's planted by the rivers of water because you need water in order for that fruit to grow. You got to have it. If you don't get the word of God, if you don't get your prayer life intact, if you don't have those things where they're supposed to be, dear friend, you are not going to bring forth fruit. Amen. You're not. It's not Amen, brother. It's not going to happen. No. And what some people do out here in the church world is that they realize that they're not bringing forth fruit, but at the same time, they don't want you to feel like they're not saved. So now they have to mask it and make it appear and look like they're bringing forth fruit, but then when they leave here, they're totally different people. Yeah. Yeah, right. Totally yeah, different right. people. Yeah. And the Lord gives them space and He gives them a time to get that right, to repent and to get things fixed and to get it lined up so that you're not uh, pretending and that you actually are who you are. But they push that aside and they go on and they go on. And then eventually God takes the branch away from them and He throws it down. And there you see it a withered right. branch. Yeah, right. With no fruit. Amen. God is merciful to us. God wants us to bear fruit. Yes. But if you don't desire to bear fruit, dear friend, God's not going to put fruit on our vine for us. It's not going to happen. Over in John, the 12th chapter, Brother Sam, how do we bear this fruit? Well, let's talk about it. John 12, verse 24. Oh, yes. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Thank God. Verse 25 said, He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life. Praise the living God. If you want to bear forth fruit, you got to die out to self. You got to die out to self. Dear friend, you have to let self go down into the ground and let it stay in that ground dead. That's right. Come on. And dear friend, once that self goes into the ground, it goes into the ground dead, then you can bring forth fruit. Yes. Man. But dear friend, as long as self is in the way, as long as self is on display, Come as long on. as self is doing what self wants to do, dear friend, you bring it forth self. That's right. Yes, you are. You're bringing forth self. Right. See, you can't bring forth fruit of your own because the fruit is of the Spirit. Yeah. Yes. We're going to read in Galatians where it says the fruit of the Spirit man. is love. That's the man. first one. Ooh, love. Love. Yeah, man. But dear friend, if you have self in the way, there's a guarantee that you're going to put self in front of love every time. Man. Yes, you will. Every time. Yes, you Why? will. Why? Because some things and some uh, requests are going to be made of you that's going to cause you to make a sacrifice. Yes, right. sir. And when you make that sacrifice, you're making a sacrifice to self. Right. As in what Jesus had to do. Jesus had to sacrifice living in heaven. Does anybody really and truly comprehend that? God bless. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. The presidential debate or the presidential uh, run that we have going on right now is going on between two billionaires slash multi millionaires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now they're going around and they're. Uh, canvassing different areas in there, doing their political speeches and trying to win votes. But dear friend, when they get done with that, they get back on a luxurious bus mm -hmm. or they get back inside of a luxurious plane uh -huh. and they fly back to a luxurious mansion and they really don't have no clue as to what them folks down on hosting or hosting right. Avenue. Right. Is you're so right, bro. They don't know. 
Yeah, they can tell you all they want. They want to help you when we go past this law. We're going to get this. We're going to make sure that you don't have this problem and that problem. Dear friend, but they sitting over there being fed, getting their feet done, getting their nails done, getting their hair done, getting facials, and living the dream life. But they want to tell you, yeah, I'm, I'm going to help you out. Like, just, just put me in this office and, and I'm, I'm going to get you together. I'm going to take care of you. Bye bye. What Jesus said is that. I care for you, <clears throat> excuse me, so much. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave Come on. Come on. heaven. I'm Come going on. to leave luxury. Yeah. I'm going to leave the most glorious place that has ever been created. What a thought. And I'm going to come down to the most vilest place that has been created. And I'm not only just going to come down there, but I'm going to come down there and sacrifice my whole life and do everything I can for you and nothing for myself. Glory to Jesus. And I'm not going to come in a robe. I'm not going to come with my princess beside me. I'm not going to come with the chariot. I'm not going to come with the big old mansion. So I don't get through with you. I'm going to come and I'm going to live with you as you. The Bible says that he sat down and he ate with the uh, 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 the poor folks and the uh, the tax collectors, the publicans. Yeah, yeah. And the Pharisees, they was upset with that. Why are you eating with publicans? Why are you dealing with the, the low life? Why are you dealing with the broken hearted? Why are you dealing with the ones that are sick? Why are you dealing with all those that are Why are you down there dealing with all poor Yeah. You supposed to be a king. You supposed to be a king. Why are you going to put your throne somewhere? Why are you worried about these people? Why are you worried about these that can't help themselves? Why are you worried about these that are broken hearted, that are hurting, that are going through different things? Why are you so worried about this? Jesus said, because. He said, he that is whole, yeah, he did. they don't need a position. He said, but he that is sick, yeah. he that is hurting, he that is going through some things, he that just like it can't make it, he that needs to be revitalized. Thank you. Those are the ones that need me. Praise Christ. I'm here for them. I'm here to help them. You talk a good game. Yeah, you talk like you want to help them. Come on. But I know your spirit. My mind. Because oh, I seen the man that was on the road that went down to Samaria. Yeah. Hey. And the one man walked by and I, I can't do nothing for him. Man. And you had the Pharisee, the other one walked by and ain't nothing I could do for him. But then you had somebody that had the mentality of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Compassionate, yeah. loving, yeah. caring, yeah. listen. Help him up. Yeah. Heal his wounds. Heal his cuts. Yeah. Take him and put him yeah. in the end. And whatever it costs you, my friend, when I come back, I will pay you all. Yeah, right. Right. Dear friend, for Jesus to get some of us saved, don't you know it costed a whole lot? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know that bill that he had to pay was a whole lot? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know it's like you walking into a restaurant yeah. and it's full and everybody ordered the most expensive meal and then you get the bill? Uh... <laughs> I, I didn't have the uh, six filet mignon meal. I have, this is not my meal. And they said that you had it. You can take care of it. Jesus right. took care of our sin. Thank you, Jesus. The many, right. Know that, right. the few, the in between, the all encompassing sins. He paid the debt for all of them. Yes. Praise God. So he only asked one right. question of us. Man, he said, as I did for you, Amen. would you just go ahead and put yourself, put yourself, put you, put that selfishness to that nature, put you, would you put that in the ground so I can put my Holy Spirit in you and then you can bring forth fruit? Amen. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. That's right. Would you just do that for me? That's all he's asking. Galatians. Let's read about that fruit. Galatians, the fifth chapter. This was memory work. I'm sure most everybody in here might have recite Galatians 5 and 22. But when I was studying this thing out and reading over this and looking at this, the Lord showed me something a little more in depth to what he was talking about here. 
The Bible says in verse number 22, before that, he talked about the works of the flesh. Right. <laughs> Come on. That's right. Matter of fact, verse 18, we'll start there. It says, but if ye be laid of the spirit, ye are not under the law or of the flesh. Then 19 says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Uh-huh. Adultery, yeah. fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Yes. Now you read through that catalog of things that we just read through, and most people are going to automatically make the assumption that, well, if you're not saved, then this is what they're talking about. But dear friend, he's talking about people that are saved. Mm -hmm. When he wrote the letter to the Galatians, uh, he wrote to the church at Galatia. Come on. So he's talking to those who's professing salvation. If we go up to verse number 17, let me explain exactly okay, my man. point. On, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, uh -huh. yeah. and the spirit yeah. against the flesh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Oh, Lord. That's right. Meaning your flesh is trying to do some things that ought not to be doing. That's right. And the spirit is trying to tell the flesh to stop doing what it's doing. Oh, yeah. But because you don't have the spirit, you're not listening to the spirit, you're letting your flesh overrule the spirit and do things that it ought not to be doing. That's right. And he said the flesh, the, flesh. the work that the flesh does are these. Yes. Adultery, fornication, yes. uncleanness, yes. lasciviousness. You yes. say, well, how in the world can he, the flesh do adultery? Because you want somebody so bad and you know you've already been married, but because the flesh is raising up, dear friend, you say, I'm going to get me another one anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Then it said fornication. You fornicate if you commit adultery. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's Come on, that works. Uncleanness, yeah, lasciviousness, right. idolatry. You're worshiping things you ought not to be worshiping. Variance, hatred, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition. Where does all that come from? All that comes from not having the Holy Spirit in your life. That's right, friend. But you got self. That's and that's self that's right. is going to eventually envy that's other right. people. The envy of the people, dear friends, we're going to end up with seditions. And after you end up with seditions, dear friend, then you got strife. Yes, sir. And then you have heresies. And then you got murders and drinking and revel. You got all this foolishness. Why? Because self, self took over. Self been away. Self took over. Self did what self wanted to do. And dear friend, let me explain something to you. You can't control self. So once self gets to going, self is going to keep going. You can't stop self. That's why this catalog is so fast. Some people didn't start off with uh, adultery or fornication, but they start off with some little small things. Y'all not be talking on the phone to that individual. Y'all not be sending them text messages to that individual. Y'all not be accepting flowers on your desk at work from that individual. It starts off with those small things, but dear friend, the more and more self gets to working and working, next thing you know, adultery. That's right. You're so right, bro. Adultery. Dear friend, what he's saying is in verse number 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. When you go through the Bible, the New Testament for sure, and you look at the word Spirit, the majority, if not almost every time, the word Spirit, if it is capitalized, is talking about somebody in particular. Yes. Yes, there you are. The fruit of the spirit, not just any old spirit, not just regular spirits that just out and about. That's right, come on. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on. The That's fruit right. of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The fruit of the comforter that he promised us way back in the Gospel of John. Amen. Dear friend, you have to have this spirit right. if you plan on bringing forth fruit. Why? Because the fruit of the Spirit is what you have to bring forth. If you don't have the Spirit, how can you bring forth His fruit? Oh, that's right. Man, man, you are so right. Come you on, can't bro. bring forth fruit if you don't have the Holy Spirit. That's right. 
Yeah. You can read your Bible. You can come to church and sing. And you can get up and testify. You can sing in the choir. Dear friend, you can stand behind the pulpit and preach a message. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, dear friend, you're not going to bring forth fruit. Amen. We got plenty of carnal preachers. Amen. Plenty of them. Yes, Too sir. many. We got plenty of carnal folks singing in the choir. Plenty of them. Too many. We got plenty of people who are carnal, who want self, who don't want the spirit. And so that's the reason why we talked about earlier that catalog of individuals, 75% of them don't make it. They don't. That's right. Because only 25% is really ready and willing to die out completely to self. Lord, I am all yours. Get rid of me. Burn me up. Bury me in the ground. Do whatever you have to do. But when I come forth, I want to come forth as gold. And I want to come forth bringing forth and bearing fruit. That's right. Amen. Dear friend, you know a fruit bearer. Indeed. Or you know. You'll know a fruit bearer. The That's Bible right. says you'll know them how. By the fruit. You know them by their fruit. That's right. The Holy that's Spirit right. can't be hidden. The Holy Spirit is nothing that's done in the darker or behind the scenes. Dear friend, the Holy Spirit is out front, up close, and personal. Yes, it Why? Yes, because it in order all. for souls to be one to the kingdom, souls have to see a difference. In order for them to see a difference, they're going to have to see fruit. That's right. They got to see fruit. They have to see that the Holy Spirit is real <laughs> and that he's working. Amen. And so the Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit and the first one that is named is what? Love. Love. You don't have the fruit of the Spirit. That's right. You don't have the Spirit. Dear friend, you have to have love. Yes, Why? Because know. the Bible says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. That's right. Love covers a multitude of sin. Yes, it does. But the first Corinthians chapter 13 is the love chapter. And if you read down through that chapter, when it gets down to the end, Paul said, the greatest of these. You can have faith. You can have hope. He said, but charity. The greatest of all those, charity. You have to have love. You got to have it. Dear friend, don't you know if you have the fruit of the spirit of love that no matter what comes your way, you can go through it. Amen. That's right. It doesn't matter who treats you wrong. It doesn't matter who talks about you. It doesn't matter who steps on you. It doesn't matter who disrespects you. It doesn't matter what goes on in your life. Dear friend, when you have this love the right way, Come on. you can make it. Amen. You can go through whatever comes your way. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And what's attached to love? Peace. Dear friend, joy. You got joy this evening? Do you have joy down in your soul this evening? Dear friend, I'm not talking about you can reach in your pocket and pull out money, so yeah, I got joy. Dear friend, I'm talking about joy down in your soul. He sang a song that the storm uh, rages, but I have perfect peace. Now, we're talking about a storm right now here that's going on, Hurricane Matthew, that has caused millions of people to uproot and leave their house. That's right. And the majority of them, I guarantee you they're worried about, am I going to lose the furniture? Am I going to lose this car? Am I going to lose the house? Am I going to lose these pictures? Am I going to lose my journal? And they were probably even in the house packing things up to take with them because they didn't want to leave them. But dear friend, if a storm like that comes our way, we can be sure that because we're standing on a true foundation, we are. that the storms may rage, the winds may blow, the floods may come, but dear I'm friend, not did our house not stand sure? Did our house not stand firm? Dear friend, that's because we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has guided us. He has shown us this is how you stand the test of time. My God. The fruit of the Spirit. That's you're going to bring forth 30-fold. You're going to bring forth 60-fold. You're going to bring forth 100-fold. Okay. Well, love is 10. Joy is 10. Peace is 10. Come on. Long suffering. That's about 50. Oh, that's right. Come on. 
People don't want to suffer long. No, true. Hey, I'm trying to Stay tell down. you this, and it's like, yeah, we have to. start the time clock. And in about a minute and 30 seconds, to. I'm not going to be able to take this any longer. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. But long suffering, dear friend. Yes. That's what I suffer love. Suffer long. Love it. And I think about how long God had to suffer with yeah, me. Yeah. Dear friend, all the stuff that I was doing, all the Lord minutes Jesus. I was doing, all the seconds. You think about time, yet? Yeah, it took five years to get saved. Oh, Jesus waited five years worth of seconds. Mm -hmm. Seconds. Each second, you're sinning and doing things that he doesn't like. And he got to sit there and long suffer with you to just keep doing things that he's disappointed with, that he's angry with. And he still has to show compassion and still has to show love and still has to have mercy so that you don't go too far and that you don't do too much. And 1,600 minutes later, there he is still having compassion and having mercy. And then another 300,000 hours later, there he is still compassionate. Still having mercy, still intervening, still holding judgment back, trying to get you to that millionth hour to when he can finally let you see Jesus loves you. Yeah. Yeah. When you turn away from this foolishness and come to me, different, I have to keep that in mind so when the roles are reversed and something comes my way, I got to long suffer, dear friend, as long as it takes. Me too. Man. As long as it takes. Right. Long suffering will get us so much further than where we yes, are today. It will. People don't want to suffer. They don't want to feel hurt. They don't want to feel pain. They want everything to be all right. All the time. I want it to be just peaches and creams all the time. I don't want to put my uh, spoon in the ice cream and happen to bite on a rock. I want it to be smooth and a little bit out of the microwave, real mushy. <laughs> Come on out, bro. I want it good and smooth. I want it right. I want it just perfect for me. But dear friend, let me explain something to you. If you're going to have this salvation the way you're supposed to have it, every now and then you're going to jump down on something that might hurt. It might be a rough bite and it might break a couple teeth. Dear friend, it might go down a little bit deeper and it hit you hard in the heart. And it might cause you to shake a little bit. It might cause some water to fall out your eyes. Hold on. It might cause you to lose It might lose your appetite. You might not be able to go to the refrigerator for a couple of days. You might not even want to smell the smell of some fresh, fresh cut greens. Dear friend, all you want to do is get down on before God, lay out before God, and cry out to God, help. Yes. Because I don't want to defeat you. Yes. I don't want to be defeated. I don't want to lose fruit. I don't want to get my bread snatched away from the vine. I want to bring forth fruit. So if this is what it takes to bring forth fruit, dear friend, growing pains. Amen. Growing pains. That's right. Sometimes the farmer goes out there with uh, shears in his hand. He goes and does a little pruning. Yeah. It's some yeah. stuff that cut. Ouch. That's what the branch is saying. It's getting cut on. Come on. But it's for your good. So that you can bring forth more fruit. Yes. Right. Amen. Yeah, the fruit right. of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, right. gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Dear friend, the word of God is precious. Yeah. 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 Real. He said a sword went forth Ooh, to sow. We're sowing some seeds tonight, and our prayer is that your heart, is that your heart is tender, that your heart is uh, follow ground, that is broken up, yes. that it can receive these seeds and that it can germinate, <laughs> and that the Lord can add the increase. The yeah. Bible says one planet, another water, yes. but God, oh, yeah. God oh, gives the oh, increase. Yeah. So with the Lord's help, we want to just plant some seeds in your heart. And let another brother come by and do a little bit of watering. And then let God, let God come down and give Praise increase, God. In your soul, increase in your spirit so that you blossom, so that you grow, so that everyone knows that you're not of the first 75%, but you're of the last 25%. That brought forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100-fold. 
Amen. Come on. In closing, All over right. in Hebrews, we don't have to go there, but in Hebrews, he talks about how God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And dear friend, when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he sent Moses to the children of Israel while they were still in Egypt to meet with the elders and the princes to tell them that God has sent me here to deliver you all from Egypt and to take you to the Canaan land, which is full of milk and honey and fruit and a prosperous land. Come on, that right. He told them that before he ever went to Pharaoh. Yes, he did. Yes. He didn't go to Pharaoh and then go to the children of Israel. He went to the children of Israel and told them first, this is what God has sent me here to do. Right. Then he went to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh, let my people go so I can take them into the wilderness and worship God and ultimately to the land of Canaan. Why is that important? Because, dear friend, when it came time for them to go over there, they wouldn't go. That's right. They said, them men are giants over there. We can't go over there. And God is saying, now, this is the land that flows with milk and honey that I promised to you years ago. So the Hebrew writer told us, he said, don't allow your heart to harden. That's right. And you miss out on your rest. Like the children God bless, of Israel. God bless. Because God oh, yeah. said, these children of Israel, 20 years and upward, except for <laughs> Caleb and Joshua, their carcasses yes, right. will die in this wilderness. Yes, God. Yes. Yes, God. Category number three. They were choked out, but they didn't bring forth fruit. That's right. Many people, dear friend, are hanging around the church of God. They're not bringing forth fruit. But they're not doing anything else but just temporarily holding up time until their carcass dies in the wilderness. Come on. If you're going to be around the church of God, why not go ahead and bring forth fruit? Why not go ahead and let your heart be softened? Don't let your heart get hardened so that you can't hear the word of God and that it will not be able to penetrate and allow you to bring forth fruit. And God bless you. Great. Great.